love you with the love a man has for his only son, with his heart and his soul and his might. And I take great pleasure in your mind as you take the mystery on of the Lord's act in creation, though the issue is distant and deep and who could approach its foundation. But I'll tell you something I've heard and let you dwell on its strangeness. Sages have said that the secret of being owes all to the all who has all in his hand. He longs to give form to the formless as a lover longs for a friend. And this is maybe what the prophets meant when they said he worked all for his own exaltation. I offered you these words. Now show me how you'll raise them. These lines by Blake and Ibn Gabirol, writers separated by seven and a half centuries, emerge from conspicuously conventional of distinct traditions. But they hold the changing world within the double helix of their revitalized conventions, in their musical fiber, in their figures, their syntax, their cadence, and their sense. Their conventions are, in other words, infused with life. Rather than simply filling out the space of a social, political, or aesthetic interaction in merely elegant or impressive fashion, conventions animated by a radical vision work subversively as they return us to a visceral sense of the powerful, frightening, dangerous, marvelous, and yes, weird forces all around and within us. Forces that are always gathering and being combined and accounted for, always beginning in new constellation, always commencing. And this is the case whether one is attending to words or to molecules, to patterns in the woods or an orchestra pit, to shapes on a canvas or a screen or along a spreadsheet. What I'm getting at, I suppose, comes down to this. Whether you end up working, or now work, in the arts or in commerce, in politics, the community, or lab, and regardless of you, what you wear to that work, a t-shirt or a hair shirt, overalls, jeans, a sweater or a pinstripe suit, a baseball cap or beret, you will at some point, in fact, at every point, find yourself consciously or unconsciously engaged with a set of often inconspicuous conventions. Do not despise these small things. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10. Recognize them, respect them and the need for them, but most important, reimagine and reconceive them incessantly and keep your altering eye on the altering prize. Not the trappings of innovation and identity, not the posture of a certain politics, and not the experimental manner, but its abiding ethos, which calls for approaching the unknown with courage and rigor, and a compassion born of, deep, of a deep-seated sense and perception of relation. So much for the highfalutin and not exactly practical part of what I want to say. <laughs> it's also conventional in speeches of this sort to offer more grounded advice, and I'd like to conclude by honoring that commencement convention in almost conventional fashion. <laughs> Briefly then, two tidbits. First, a single sentence from a modest man of letters who made of his very being in the world a vehicle for art of the highest order, one in which people could meet around certain conventions made new, so as to get to the heart of something old and utterly wondrous and true, and through that meeting be made more fully and intensely human. I'm trying to describe Robert Fitzgerald, the master translator of Homer, whose translation of Homer, in fact, I read here in my last year, among the many other things that he was, poet, reporter, teacher, and radiant, the self-effacing sage of the memoir. Looking back over a life well-lived across three quarters of a brutal century, 
Fitzgerald offered words that I have tacked up above my desk, and which amount to something like a creed transcending all manners and modes, all disciplines and forms of desire. It seems to me, Fitzgerald said, there are a few things everyone can humbly try to hold on to. Love and mercy and humor in day-to-day -day living. The quest for exact truth in language and affairs of the intellect. Self-recollection or prayer. And the peace, the composed energy of art. From a rung on the ladder of poetry, and within the mystery of its making, that is what I wish each one of you today, as you head out to do what you will, or won't. A palpable sense of those elusive things themselves, love and especially humor, that truth and energy and peace, but above all, the ability to humbly try to hold on to them, perhaps through conventions redrawn, perhaps through the redrawing itself, and finally, while it's foolish to follow Fitzgerald, let alone a sentence as charged with grace as the one I've just cited, in the spirit of radical convention, and also of this institution, I'd like to add just one more thing. Be weird. Thank you.